So I'm going to demo a few variations of items more than you even asked for. And I've set up this test account. It's set up to access e-commerce down here. And then I've got a contact that has an e-commerce password up here. So let's go to e-commerce. So the first item I'm going to demo has stock and also allows back order. Here it is. Notice how it just shows me MSRP, but not dealer price. You don't have to call it dealer. You can call it whatever you want. But uh, in this case, I'm going to log in as the dealer, and it shows me dealer price. So I'm going to add that to my cart. Normally, you'd have a button that shows continue shopping, but it's not been added yet. I could still close the window, and it does the same thing. Next item, here it is, oh, does not have stock, does allow back order. This item is the only one of the five here that also has a vendor with a method of shipping and a days set for that method of shipping. So the method of shipping can be whatever you want, UPS ground, trucking, whatever, and then you set the number of days and I'll show you what that does. Instead of showing out of stock, which it normally would, see, no stock, we're going to try to promote the sale anytime we can. So instead, we'll just show usually ships in five days. The buyer will not necessarily know that it's not in stock, simply that they might get it in five days or that it ships in five days. So that's the benefit of uh, of this particular capability. I'll add it to the cart. Next item does not have stock and does not allow back order. Notice how I can't even add it to my order, but there is a call to order, a call to action. The idea being you want to promote the sale, although it does say out of stock. So, you know, th there is no stock and there is no allow back order. If it had allowed back order, then that would be different. And I'll show you that on the next item. So this one we can't add to the order. Uh, likewise, this one doesn't have stock, but the back order checkbox is selected. And what that means is that it will show in stock. Even though it's out of stock, it'll show in stock. And what a lot of people will do is blind dropship or backorder dropship from the vendor. The buyer never knows that you didn't have it in stock. And the idea is to promote the sale. So rather than show out of stock, you're now going to ship the product from your vendor to the customer and everybody wins. I'll add this to the cart. And then the last item has stock, but is default set to dropship. There's a little checkbox you can select. So that's this item. Add to cart. And we'll check out. I'll select bill me. This wouldn't be available if I had exceeded my credit limit, which was set at 25K. This order is 2177, and I've got a balance due of 1490. So because this amount is greater, it allows me to select this. Otherwise, I'd be stuck paying with a credit card. I'll place the order. Great. So my order was placed successfully. I'll check my inbox. Here's the sale with the email template and the invoice slash receipt. Now we'll see what happened inside the order and try to fulfill it. I'm going to click my sales orders list from orders and quotes. You can see it was created today. Here it is, Carl Inc. I've got two items on back order out of three, and I've got one drop ship. These are the two icons that will show me the two items on back order and the one item that was set to drop ship. 
So I would need to create those purchase orders, which I'll not demo right now. If I try to open the order, it's going to nag me until I create these POs because clearly time is of the essence and it's prompting me to do that as quickly as possible. So let me go back to my sales order list, show you a couple things. These are columns you can set. The um, total amount paid will show paid when it's fully paid by the customer. If it was a credit card payment, this would have showed the paid stamp. Over here I could see that it came from the website. This is how you differentiate between an internal and a website order. I'll go ahead and create the purchase order now for these. This is going to default to the primary vendor. In this case, there's only one. So now the dropship, that was a dropship I just created. This is the back order. So this one has two vendors. This one hasn't had a vendor set up for it. So I'm probably going to want to remove it from the order and create a purchase order separately. This is a great example of why we should always set up our items with vendors. So now I'll go ahead and create my back order PO. Back to the sales order. Now to fulfill this order, I have a couple of options. I can pick, pack, and ship, or I can simply close the order. Right now, the items that are in stock will have gone on allocation by creating the order. So if I try to close it, it's going to check to see if I have enough in stock on any of these items. And if, it, if one of them does not have enough in stock, it's going to prevent me from doing that so that I have to purchase and receive product in order to fulfill this, in order to ship this out. So it's going to tell me that I can't until I receive the purchase orders that I just generated for the back order. Uh, and here we go. So as you can see, you can't ship at this time because you don't have enough quantity on hand to support your shipment. Makes perfect sense. When you receive product in order for us to ship that sales order, you would do that from Purchase Fulfillment, and I would need to select these two items into stock. I'm not going to do that because I'm not in my test account, but this is what I normally would do. So I'm going to delete these orders. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how e-commerce and order management and biz are tied together and how you would fulfill a pretty complex order filled with dropship stock and back-ordered items. So let me now open another account and show you a more simple order process from an existing sales order. Firstly, I want to draw your attention to the order slash shipped and inventory status. So this means that all the items that are inventoried within this order are ready to ship, and I don't have to back order or drop ship. So I'll go ahead and open one of these. Also, this means that there's no invoice. This is the pick, pack, and ship process from within the order. First thing I'm going to do is add a packing slip, which can also double as my pick list. Now, because this is where I'm going to ship from, this is where I'm going to generate the shipping labels and tracking numbers. Now, this needs some dimensions, which aren't in the item, so I'll add them here. Save and proceed. And that takes me to the final page before I actually generate the shipping label and tracking number. This account is not connected to UPS or FedEx, so I'm not actually going to build that document, but that would be the last step of the shipping process. Here's my packing slip that I created. I'm now going to release allocation. That's what so I've picked. I'm now going to pack and ship. So I'll click add. That will have released allocation from my inventory. And then the last step is to invoice that client. So I'll click add. And Biz will add the invoice for the order and open it so that I can email it to the client. Okay, so that completes the sales fulfillment 
on a simple sales order that doesn't have back order slash drop ship. In accounting, I'm going to have accounts payable, so I'm going to pay invoices from here. Method of shipment, credit card, whatever. Down here, it's going to say receive payment and close window. Okay, so I don't want to make this video too complicated, so you just wanted to see a couple of uh, lead to order demos. So I'll just go to relationship, create a prospect or a lead, maybe just a lead. You define the windows any way you want. In this case, org name, maybe an email. I created my lead. Once I create an opportunity, which is optional, and I'll not go through that process because it includes adding the object of the opportunity, which are the products and services. It's a lot like creating an order. That automatically promotes this lead to prospect, or I can click this button and promote them to prospect. So now they're a lead, now they're a prospect. You can send out a quote from either record, doesn't matter. But now that they're a prospect, if I had that opportunity and, and that opportunity became an order, this would automatically become an account, or I can promote them manually, or I can just create a sales order. Control I gets me to the item. Notice how this item has nothing in stock. So I'm going to switch it to another warehouse that does have stock. I can see orders in transit. These are my purchase orders. Data delivery any related item, like an accessory or an upsell, cross-sell. My price history for this item, as you can see, it's pretty substantial. And this is for all customers. So if I just want to filter it for this customer, I click this, and I'm not going to see anything because it's a new customer. We just created it. Here's my promotion that might be on offer for this, this item. That's promotion management. So I'll just uh, add my item and just create the order. We have minimum price margins that you can set up, and that's the case here. So I'll just approve it. I'm an approver in, the, uh, in this account, so I can just approve it from here. Otherwise, a salesperson wouldn't have that right. Now, because I created a sales order, our test org automatically became an account, as you can see here. And the rest, I think, we've demoed. So to keep this video short, I'm going to leave it there.